Tax Refund 2021. Welcome back everyone. So happy to have you back. Before we begin with today's video, make sure you check out the income tax refund playlist pinned in the comment section with all of your timely refund updates and tutorials, how to verify your identity, tips to get a live person on the phone at the IRS, the taxpayer advocate information for hardships, how to order a transcript online, check out the playlist, uh, all of the approval dates from the comment sections with others sharing their success stories. All of those videos are now in one playlist for you to check them out as well as my success story. That video is also in the playlist. For today's video, we have the Taxpayer Advocate Service Erin Collins testifying uh, with her recommendations for taxpayers interest going forward, uh, especially in regards to this year's tax filing season. So let's go ahead and listen to her suggestions for the IRS. This past year, our local taxpayer advocates have helped over 230,000 taxpayers and their families. Our centralized case intake advocates have assisted more than 33,000 taxpayers, and currently we have over 68,000 open cases. At the same time, our systemic advocacy employees have advocated for taxpayers on multiple issues throughout the year, impacting millions of taxpayers. I'm proud of what all of our TAS employees have been able to accomplish. And although like the IRS, we still are facing challenges with high call volumes and increased case number. I also want to give a quick shout out to our low income tax clinics and taxpayer advocacy panel. Together with the VITA and TICE volunteers, they provide an essential service for taxpayers and tax administration. Although this hearing addresses narrowing the tax gap, which is an admirable pursuit uh, by Congress and the IRS, my testimony will focus on the filing season, improving taxpayer service, and protecting taxpayer rights, and ensuring a fair and just tax system that individuals have confidence in and can trust. And I appreciate your recognition that service is paramount to a good tax administration. On a positive note, I do want to commend the IRS leadership and its employees for what they did accomplish this past filing season. As of last week, the IRS had processed over 116 million tax returns. They issued over 85 million refunds of about 243 billion and issued three rounds of stimulus payments over the last year, most without a problem. And then, as the commissioner indicated on May 17th, they received a number, a record number of filed returns on the last day of over 15 million returns. At the same time, the combination of office closures required by the pandemic, additional responsibilities to administer the stimulus and other relief programs, late legislative changes, the challenges in processing paper returns, and the reduced staffing has combined together to make this the IRS's most challenging filing season, probably in, in my memory, if not history. As of this writing, the IRS is still trying to struggle and manually processing more than 30 million individual and business tax returns. Most taxpayers who are entitled to refunds, they check the IRS tool, where's my refund? But unfortunately, it provides little information for those backlogged, unprocessed or suspended returns. So taxpayers take to calling the IRS, which results in more calls and lower level of service than any prior year. At the height of the filing season, the IRS has experienced record-breaking, unprecedented calls, and it received approximately, as the commissioner just noted, 1,500 calls per second. I mean, think of that, 1,500 calls per second, which is a, a, a tremendous increase and I, th I think at the one time during the filing season, their 1040 toll-free line, unfortunately, the level of service reached a low of about 5%. Although there is no quick fix to eliminate the challenge currently facing taxpayers, my written statement, I offer some recommendations to improve taxpayer experience and enhance taxpayer administration during the filing season, especially for those able to file electronically. My first recommendation is for Congress. The IRS needs more resources of helping taxpayers collecting revenue and providing those social programs such as the stimulus payments and the annual credit. By providing additional funding and oversight, we can improve IRS capabilities by providing taxpayers better service while protecting their rights. 
Second, the IRS must prior prioritize an accessible, robust, and functional online account for practitioners and taxpayers. This should not be a luxury. This should be a standard tool the IRS provides all taxpayers. Third, expand customer calling back technology for all IRS toll-free lines and keep moving forward with other technological options under development. Fourth, reduce the barriers for e-filing tax returns. Fifth, for future paper returns that are prepared electronically but submitted through the mail, IRS should utilize technology for more accurate, quicker, and cheaper processing. Six, expand and make permanent the digital acceptance and electronic transmission of documents and digital signatures. What you all do every day, use of email, uploading, downloading documents in a secure environment. And the last recommendation is to consider to offer video conferencing options to taxpayers even as IRS facilities begin to open. So in closing, taxpayer service must continue to improve. Our citizens deserve a responsive and respectful tax administration that serves all taxpayers fairly. Closing the tax gap should not result in reduced taxpayer service or undermine any taxpayer rights. To the contrary, voluntary compliance should be rewarded and not a victim of increased enforcement. And I believe the Congress and the IRS share that goal of ensuring that the efforts to narrow the tax gap are consistent with taxpayers' fundamental rights and to encourage a fair and just tax system. So thank you for inviting me here today. I look forward to continue working with the IRS and Congress to help improve taxpayer service, and I'll be happy to answer questions.